Yo, people, yo, people. So quite incredibly, Donald Trump did a three-hour-long conversation with Joe Rogan. And obviously, this is something that Kamala Harris would never do because she's too afraid. And they had a lot of interesting discussions in this three-hour interview. But I thought I would highlight a couple of the most interesting ones and react to those. So let's start off with the first clip, which is about the paradigm shift in American politics. Take a listen. The rebels are Republicans now. They're like, you want to yeah, be I a rebel? Them, you want right? to be punk rock? Right. You want to, like, yeah. buck the system? You're yeah. a conservative now. That's the, mm -hmm. that's how crazy. And then the liberals are now pro, pro, pro silencing criticism. They're, they're pro censorship online. They're, they're talking they about regulating free speech and they're regulating the First Amendment. It's bananas to watch. Joe, they come after their political opponent. Well, they I do. I got more guys. I always say, you know, I kid, but it, I'm not kidding. I've been investigated more than Alphonse Capone. He was the meanest of them all. He'd kill you in two seconds if he didn't like you, right? I've been under investigation more than Alphonse Capone, only because it's political opponent stuff. And I've won. I won the big case in Florida. I, I'm winning the other stuff. You win. But you know what they did? They did something that's only done in third world countries. They came after their political opponent. Yes. I could have put crooked Hillary in jail. Well, not only that, but they're now weaponizing it by saying that that's what you're going to do once oh, yeah, you get yeah. in office. Isn't it great? By ignoring he what they're doing right now. It's crazy. I heard it. To, somebody was defending me today. They said, no, that's, they say, that's what you're doing to him. They're going, he's going to put us in jail. He's going to invest... They that's said, what you're that's doing. That's what you're doing to him. Yeah. A lot of people say, "Will you do that? Will you do that to him? If, you, if to them, if you win, you know, it's the presidency has tremendous power. I could have put crooked Hillary. I in respected jail. that you didn't because didn't. what you said was it would be bad for the country. And now let's take a look at the next clip, which is about voter ID. Mail in ballots are a bad thing. Bad that thing. that certainly is is a problem. Mail mail in ballots are a problem. But every Another other country, you know, is other voter ID. Yeah, a voter ID. How voter about? ID is the most bizarre argument yeah. that I've never seen anybody articulate in a way that's convincing. Because why they you want don't to cheat. need voter. Well, it doesn't make sense any other way. I've tried to straw man it, or I tried to steel man it rather. I've tried to like look at it from a position like, why would you not want people to have ID? And a lot of the ideas are cheat. Just ridiculous. The, you Gavin need an Newscom. ID to get a driver's license. Okay, but here's now the next step. Gavin Newscom, one of the worst governors in the world, for, and I used to, frankly, I used to get along, but I don't get along with him now because he's just too, you know, it's just a whole con job. But Gavin Newscom the other day signed a bill that you are not allowed to ask a person, even ask them whether or not they have a voter ID. Now, what could be Did a charitable ask, reason why anybody would want Because they want to cheat. That, but that would be the cheat. only thing that makes sense. But that's taking it to the next level. Right. Now, you know, you have ID. The Democrat National Convention, when they had it the last time I saw, they had a sign, like a billboard, on the, the name of the person, where they live, how they live, who the hell their boyfriends are. Every single... It was and a big picture. That's for there. They have an ID, a big ID. It's, it was hanging like you were a prisoner. It, they had these massive cards, everything. And yet when it comes to the vote, in theory, the most important thing we do, okay, when you go to a grocery store, you give ID. But for a vote, it's supposed to be a sacred thing. And it, it should be a sacred thing. No voter ID because they want to cheat. Well, it doesn't make sense in any other way. I've tried to look at there's it. There's no other way. Uh, there's, I, there's no argument that anybody's presented that makes any sense. Why? You know the funny uh, thing, Joe? The Democrats, the people, they all think you should have it. In other words, you should have it. Yeah. If you go to the people, Mrs. Schwartz, Mrs. Smith, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Sure. They say, of course, yeah. Democrats, they say yes. It's the politicians that don't want it, like Schumer and these guys. They don't want it because they want to be able to cheat because you know what? If they didn't have it, okay, who is going to vote for somebody that wants open borders? Who's going to vote for somebody that wants to have uh, men playing in women's sports? So there you go, there you go. Those are the couple of issues I wanted to highlight here for you. And I'll, re I'll react to some of these. I'll start off with, I think, the second one, because I think the second one is a bit more interesting, the issue of voter ID. And both of them are basically just coming to the conclusion that is rather obvious, which is the Democrats don't want you to require voter ID at the polls is so they can cheat. I mean, on a completely unrelated note, Joe Biden did get 81 million votes. Here's the thing, right? It's actually a pretty good acid test, this voter ID discussion. If there's somebody out there claiming that you should not require voter ID to vote, 
that person should have their voter ID revoked. Your ability to vote should be removed. Like the only people who ever justify not requiring a voter ID are the people who are like so brainwashed by the Democratic Party, such Democratic Party loyalists that they will basically cope so hard. They will rationalize more or less anything the Democratic Party comes out with. That's why you hear this pathetic excuse that they come up with about how the reason why we shouldn't require voter IDs is because poor people can't afford an ID. And so how are they going to vote? Which is the biggest load of horse shit I have ever heard in my entire life. First of all, it doesn't even make any sense because why would politicians, especially the Democratic Party, constantly campaign pretending like they're the party of the working class if half of the working class can't even vote for them because they're too poor to afford an ID? It doesn't make any sense. And second of all, it's just not the reality in America. It's not the reality that like IDs are hard to access. It's just not. It's an entirely made up excuse to justify not requiring voter ID so that they can cheat. I mean, you require an ID to do basically anything, get a job, open a bank account, things like this, right? So how exactly you can not have an ID to begin with is very confusing to me. You'd have to be living like entirely off the grid, self-sufficient in the woods, hunting for your own food in order to justify not having a voter ID. And if that's how the way you're living, you're not going to vote anyways. Like the whole discussion is so dumb. Like it's so obvious that these people are using this piss poor excuse about poor people as a cover for not requiring voter ID so that they can facilitate cheating in the election. That's obviously what's happening. And anybody who denies that needs to give their head a shake. I mean, think about the path that Democrats are laying out in terms of their policy and electoral strategy. So these are people, right, who have facilitated open borders in this country, right? The, the flow of mass migration under the Biden-Harris administration has been unprecedented, right? So what these people want to do is flood the country with millions of illegals. There are some estimates suggest that about 10 million illegals came through the Biden-Harris open border in the course of their administration. Millions of illegals flooded the country, of, to whom the Biden-Harris administration is more than happy to offer easy, simple pathways to citizenship without really any requirements. And, so, and let's be honest, as a result of the fact that Democrats are basically loose, open border morons, and the Republicans are the only people who try and secure the border, right? Once illegals come across the border, if they ever get the chance to vote, which they will have if no one actually requires an ID to vote, they're going to vote Democrats. So that's millions of additional votes for the Democratic Party in any given election. And that already gives them a massive, massive advantage. However, it doesn't entirely tip the scales because the Electoral College blocks elections from being won solely on the popular vote. And this is, I think, one of the big reasons why you see a push from the left to dismantle the Electoral College in favour of just a rogue popular vote system, because they know. They've looked at the previous history. If you look at the previous history of elections, I'm pretty sure Democrats have won the popular vote in each of the last, like, at least five elections. I'll put up on screen the last election that Republicans won the popular vote in. But certainly I know that Donald Trump has not won the popular vote in any of the last two elections, and I'm pretty sure Barack Obama won the popular vote in both of the elections that he won. So I know that in the very least the last four elections, Democrats have won the popular vote. And one of the big reasons for this is importing all these new voters into the country and offering them a bunch of incentives to vote for the Democratic Party. And that gives them a massive edge, but it doesn't fully tip the scales. Like I said, they need to get rid of the Electoral College because the Electoral College is one of the big things preventing them from basically sweeping every single election from now until the end of time. And that is, of course, their plan. That's, of course, what they want. They want a one-party country, a party dominated by Democrat rule. This is why they import in all these new voters and at times flood them into various swing states and purple states. I mean, Texas used to be a hard red state and now it's considered to be a bit of a purple state or turning towards a purple state largely because of the demographic change forced by the Democratic Party. My guess is that's the reason why Gavin Newsom is not requiring ID at the polls to vote because Gavin Newsom understands that, yeah, he'll almost certainly win the governorship, right? There's no real chance that a Republican is going to unseat him. But he knows there is a minute possibility because of how awful of a governor he is. He knows that there's only so far you can push Californians or really anyone before they rebel and kick you out. And so what he's doing is solidifying his vote by guaranteeing illegals the right to vote effectively by not requiring an ID. And then it doesn't really matter how bad he runs the state. It doesn't matter how much he runs it into the ground or how much his party runs it into the ground. They'll be in power permanently, which is exactly the point. But let's address the first part, which is also quite interesting. The issue of the paradigm shift in American politics. You know that they say this in that first clip, that it's now the, the Republicans that are the rebels, the conservatives are the ones bucking the system. And what's crazy is that's, that is true, and it shouldn't be. Because as is implied in the name conservative, the whole point of being a conservative is to conserve things, is to preserve 
the age-old institutions is to preserve, in a sense, the status quo, right? But for conservatives in America and across the West, the status quo is supposed to mean the traditional values, cultures, institutions, and traditions that uphold the country, that uphold America. The problem now is, is that the reason why the conservatives are seen as the transgressives is because the left has done a, such a good job of displacing major institutions and principles that America were founded on. And that's why now it's considered to be transgressive to be normal. The, the conservatives are the normal ones. I know Tim Walls tried to do this whole thing about the, the Donald Trump is weird. The Republicans are weird. But let's be abundantly honest, right? Everybody in their life knows Republicans and Democrats. Democrats are much weirder human beings. These are strange human beings. The kind of people who engage in polycules and the rest are not exactly the normal ones here. But because Democrats have effectively tried to replace traditional, I suppose, normality and traditional American principles and traditions and institutions have tried to replace that with this weird ultra-liberal bullcrap, right? And they've actually been somewhat effective in doing this. It is now considered transgressive to be normal. There's not a lot of policies that Donald Trump holds that I would consider to be wildly out of bounds. Like, whoa, whoa. Like, that is way out of normality. It's just that everything is crazy now. They probably consider that part that Trump mentioned earlier about women competing in men's sports. They probably consider that controversial, whereas most other generations of Americans would not even remotely consider that to be controversial. It's only the recent generations that have been brainwashed with democratic propaganda that seem to think it's, it's just normal. Men can be women. Of course they can. Duh. And of course, as a result, logically, they can compete in women's sports. That's, that's the logic that follows. But yeah, I mean, the left has done such a good job of just attacking normal America. I mean, they hate normal marriage, for example. They hate traditional nuclear families, right? They prefer polycules and gay marriage and friends with benefits and situationships and guys whose girls are only fans. That's the kind of stuff they prefer. They hate pro-life. You know, abortion used to be considered a bad thing. Some Democrats still thought it was necessary, but it used to be considered a bad thing. Bill Clinton said it, safe, legal, and rare. Now, I don't agree with what he said, but that was him acknowledging, look, we think abortion should be allowed, but... It shouldn't be something that is happening frequently, effectively, as a form of birth control. That was the mainstream Democrat position not so long ago. Now they hate pro-life. Now they want to abort a baby up to the ninth month for pretty much any reason they feel like, just on a woman's whim, just because she, she doesn't feel like having a child. So who cares? Kill the thing. It's a parasite. It's a fetus. It's a clump of cells. It can die. Who cares? They like racism. Remember when there was a time when America seemed to be progressing away from racism and now it's trending back towards racism? thanks to the DEI reparations politics that runs rife in the Democratic Party. They embrace hedonism. Remember remember what a time in America where you weren't supposed to act like a hedonistic piece of garbage? This is especially, I think, true of women, although it's true of men too. You weren't supposed to go around sleeping with 500 men. You were supposed to at least show self-respect, right, and behave in at least a somewhat traditional way. Remember when that was the case? Not anymore. Now, now you, you can have a body count of like 300 by the time you're 20. And if a man says anything, he's a misogynist. They embrace political violence. They do it frequently. Antifa, BLM, all of the stuff after Donald Trump's inauguration, which is funny because they always talk about January 6th, but nobody ever talks about the violence that erupted as a result of Donald Trump's inauguration in 2017. But these are people who embrace political violence. Remember when there was a time when political violence wasn't really supposed to be a thing? Because that's the impression I get from, from you know older people that I know about those times, you know, the 70s and 80s and all the rest, right? That these were, I suppose, better times than we have now in terms of the politique. And that was the kind of normal America, I suppose. Not completely normal, not completely right, but much better than what we have today. And that's the normal America that the Democratic Party has systematically attempted to crush. And that's actually one of the big reasons why they're so pro-censorship. They mentioned it there, how, how the liberals are now the pro-censorship ones. That's one of the big reasons I think why they are so pro-censorship is because they realize that if you put normal America, traditional America up against the new America that these people want to create, you realize that traditional America is much more appealing and you don't, and nobody wants to have anything to do with the weird new version of America that the Democratic Party wants to create. Nobody really wants to have anything to do with it. This is why I think they censor, because they know that on the marketplace of ideas, they lose. They've known that for a long time. And so they want to silence all of those who want to return to traditional American values and traditional American institutions and, and practices. They want to silence that completely. That's why they engage in censorship. They want you, they want newer generations to grow up understanding only one version of America, the new version, the new Democratic Party version, where everything is allowed. We do whatever we want. Radical hedonism. 
radical, liberal, atheistic hedonism. That's the kind of stuff that the Democratic Party tends to push. And it's probably worked to some degree, which is why you see more young Americans than you've probably ever seen who actually hate the United States. But yeah, they, they want you to only see this one side because they know if you see the other side, you, you will be quite easily convinced to go that way. Fundamentally, they just know that on the marketplace of ideas, they lose. I mean, this is just abundantly obvious. I mean, even this, I suppose this is a bit of a juvenile example, but it's an example nonetheless. Is You can see this in the Jubilee 25 verse 1 things they've been doing recently. I've been seeing a lot of clips going around from like Charlie Kirk, 25 v 1, Ben Shapiro, 25 v 1. And it's just like 25 liberals against one conservative and they couldn't win really any of the interactions they had in any of them. Which is a sign of the fact that these people are losing and they are losing badly. And this is why they resort to these dirty tactics, right? They resort to the censorship. But there's also the dirty tactics that he mentions there about basically trying to throw Donald Trump in jail over these charges that, I mean, I mean, you can come to your own conclusion about these charges. I think we all know how, how I probably feel about that. Right? It's why they use these dirty tactics. And it's not the only dirty tactic that they use to trying to throw Donald Trump in jail. They use many dirty tactics. The Great Replacement Theory, which, as I mentioned earlier, is designed so that they can bring in foreign nationals of all various races and backgrounds before people try and claim I'm a racist, to replace ordinary Americans, to displace their vote and then create a new massive Democratic Party voter base that will stand the test of time. Rigged debates, right, with the moderators who will only fact check Donald Trump and never Kamala Harris, even though she frequently lies. Perhaps some may theorize the assassination attempt. Some may theorize it has something to do with the Democratic Party. I'm not saying it does, but some say that there might be a connection there. And obviously, of course, the censorship and trying to lock him up, right? The Democrats play really, really dirty. They don't play clean in these elections. They play to win, which is understandable to a certain degree. But when you're doing it to the point where you're engaging in genuine, like, third world Soviet Union, CCP, North Korean style tactics, in order to win elections, that's probably when you're going a bit too far to try and win. But you can see why they have to pull out all the stops for this. I mean, Donald Trump has a three hour conversation that seems to have gone very, very well for him. Whereas Sam Kamala Harris can't even do friendly interviews. She can't even do a CNN town hall without humiliating herself with basically every answer. Like, she's just like Joe. She can barely finish a sentence. I don't know what it is with the Democratic Party and putting forward candidates who can't finish basic sentences, but she's just like him in this regard. She can't finish a sentence. She can't articulate a point because she's a moron. But the Democratic Party isn't really one based on principle, especially not with principles founded on American values or respect for American institutions, because if it was, they wouldn't pull out all these dirty tactics. The Democratic Party is really just a party of power and will go to great lengths in order to attain power because they enjoy wielding it over others. I mean, we saw that with Joe Biden and his vax mandates. They are the party of power and authoritarianism. They want to create a country in the future that is permanently blue. That much is abundantly obvious. And they don't want to do it through legitimate means, through an exchange of ideas. They want to do it through sly tactics and brute force. I mean, the final point I'll note before I end this video is one of the best tactics that the left uses. And I emphasize this so frequently to people. And you need to, you need to recognize this whenever you have a discussion with anyone on the left. The issue of projection. You'll notice that they always accuse Donald Trump of being an authoritarian. I've laid out to you very clearly how the Democratic Party is really the authoritarian one-party state regime. These people are the real authoritarian. Anybody who actually looks at the policies and the behaviors of Republicans like Donald Trump and compares that to, say, Biden-Harris knows that the Democratic Party, Biden-Harris and all the rest, those are the real authoritarians. Those are the real fascists. And so be wary of that, because what they will do is instantly, in a method, as a method of self-defense, push that onto you and call you the fascist. And you should just be wary of that. But yeah, let me know what you lot think about this down below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with anything I said. Please remember to like and subscribe, people, and see ya.